Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shook. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. And then the hurt child became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. All week, been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel like, like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. Uh, last time we left off on a part that was called Walk in Freezer Park. And Walk in Freezer. Yeah, and it's where um, it's like I go into the Walk in Freezer, kind of like at the end of like, like the Bear series. Um, I go into the walk-in freezer as like a um, firefighter protection from um, a part that I think is another protector of another exile, but that part is the um, like running away right back part. And it's where it is like a, a, a fight and flight running away right back like it runs away from a fight and then gets right back into a fight okay. um and that running away right back um is just it's like a really common place that i wind up in um and, um, you know, then I end up go either like my manage my sort of long term dealing with it is like my manager um, who's called um, world builder, like long term. Mm -hmm. I just sort of create my own world where I don't have to like deal with the people who I fight with. Um, mm -hmm. And and, you know, it's. Um, and that, but then short term, the firefighter is like going into the walk in freezer. Um, okay. And um, <clears throat> so my experiences with this like running away right back, fight flight situation, I have a lot of them. Um, and um, it just, it, it feels like no matter what I do there, like, even when I'm trying to, like, be good and be conscious and respond to whatever's needed, like, I just end up right back in the same place, which is that people around me, like, don't hear me, don't see me, don't... um appreciate me don't like and and nothing gets built and then mm -hmm. it just it's just this cycle um mm -hmm. and yeah so 
Um, yeah, I guess that is like the exile um, in a way because like those other protectors, like the world builder manager and the um, walk in freezer firefighter protector, um, they protect against it. But I feel like there's like a lot there, like that that it, there's also maybe more exile behind, um, behind that feeling of like never being able to get it right for others, mm-hmm. and uh, always ending up like alone, either as a world builder or alone as a in the walk-in freezer. And the walk-in freezer is like very much that was the part we 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 I met last time where it's like it's a really like it's where I'm self-alienating um and it's very like it's very hard on the system because I'm like very you know sort of bouncing off the walls in my isolated place um and um and we, I learned last time that 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 um, walk-in freezer part would much rather be like, you know, close to self or playing mm-hmm. with self or like whispering secrets to self. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, um, so yeah, I just, I'd like to, I, I, I thought maybe today we could. Uh, work with the um, running away right back where that that leads me into the walk-in freezer that leads me into like these sort of lonely places of either feeling like I need to start over all on my own or Mm -hmm. um, or like sort of being in this really really sort of harsh alienation place okay okay So when I was talking about this running away right back part, I was saying like that anything I do, it I just wind up like not being seen, not being heard, not being understood, not mm-hmm. being, um, not getting what I'm seeking. Mm-hmm. even though I'm trying really hard to do that. <laughs> yeah. Is the running away and the running right back part of the trying really hard to do that? That's a really good question. And yeah, I think like I run away to try to get it in one place mm-hmm. and then I run right back and then I don't get it there. And then I run right back to try again to get it in the other place, mm-hmm. which okay. is interesting. Cause it's kind of like a mirror of like the manager and firefighter. Like, I yeah, I was kind of suspecting that maybe running away is kind of a protector part and running right back is another protector part. And they're both uh, working hard for a part that doesn't feel seen or heard. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The running away is like similar to like the walk-in freezer, and right, running right back into it is that manager that keeps trying to start over again and build, and build a something, new, build a new world, mm-hmm. but it, it just, it's just the same disappointment or mm-hmm. or failure. Yeah. You also mentioned that you try to be conscious and respond to whatever is needed. Yeah, like recently I was just so trying hard to like be there in the way that I thought my husband wanted me to be there for him. Mm-hmm. And like he he was just like, you're problem solving. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so not problem solving. That was so not the intent of what I was doing at all. And mm-hmm. it it triggered this whole this whole thing of me like um, 
going into the walk-in freezer. And then after that, I end up collapsing. And um, actually, after that, I end up self-brutalizing. And then I end up, end up collapsing. Um, and then I start like, you know, my manager comes in and starts building a world like where separate, where I don't have to deal with him, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It, um, okay. So when you said respond to whatever is needed, you're talking about other people's needs. Oh, interesting. Well, I mean, I was really like my husband is under a lot of pressure and I have sort of, I'm in like a low career point and I'm not like, I'm still trying to like bring more income in to support our family, to help support Mm -hmm. our family and reduce stress on him. Mm -hmm. And so I can't, I'm not, reducing stress in that way right now. So I was trying to like be there in a different way, you know, at least mm-hmm. like be there and supportive for whatever's mm-hmm. going on with him that's mm-hmm. stressful. And yeah, I like, so it was sort of a personal goal of me to like be more open to what he needs. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. And it, and it, it, didn't didn't end up going well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking about responding to the needs of the part that doesn't feel heard or seen or appreciated. Yeah. In those moments, and how that might change the protectors who are running away and running back and building things that might change their urgency or their perspective. So, yeah, the not feeling understood and seen mm-hmm. and all that, yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah. Okay. So would you like to try to get to know that part? Yeah. Okay. How do you notice it in your body? What are the sensations that come up? Um... I, it feels like something inside, like, wants to scream. Mm-hmm. Like, it feels very sort of hyper vigilant and aroused and like, ang- maybe is it anger. Okay. It, I don't know if it's anger as much as like, just defense, like, it feels like, I'm not being seen or heard or understood. And that's like an emergency that I have to scream. No, that's wrong. Like help me or something like, um, Mm -hmm. like maybe not help me, maybe more like, um, see me, listen to me. It's more like, um, It actually feels like anger is like protection against like a very deep sort of sadness or loneliness or inadequacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like screaming in pain or something, but that screaming is sort of directed at the person who's like triggering the pain. Mm Mm-hmm. Sounds protectory. Yeah. Would you like to focus on that part, the one that's doing that protection, or would you like to keep kind of tuning into the one who has that deep sadness and loneliness? I'm 
I'm kind of asking Great. Uh, the like screaming emergency protector if it's capable of like resting back mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think like it can sort of sense that I'm here. Mm -hmm. Do you notice any sensations that come about when you're looking for that lonely, inadequate feeling part? how it shows up. I'm feeling sort of like the, I guess, sadness sensation, like mm -hmm. crying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just let it know that you're getting that. And how do you feel towards that part? Um, well, I sort of had an impulse to like like comfort it um mm -hmm. but i'm trying to not fix it i guess um mm -hmm. yeah could be a part that wants to fix it yeah are you feeling curious yeah it? yeah i feel like it's got this strength, you know, that I want to know more about. Great. I want to, got this feeling, like this strong feeling. I want to. Yes. You want to get to know it. Yeah, I want to get to know it. Okay. Let, that, it know that you, let it know you'd like to get to know it. Seems very, very rich. Yes. that you have some sense of its power, you have some sense of its sadness, that you're feeling curious about it. And you could invite it to notice you and ask what it wants you to know. Anything about itself. It had its back towards me and it's turned towards me now. Mm -hmm. I've got my um my grown up manager who's like trying to piece all these things together and I'm mm. sort of trying to figure like, it all out. Right. <laughs> and so I'm mm -hmm. sort of trying to make yep. 
make room for this. Mm -hmm. Yep, just ask it for space. We're just going to stay curious and try to see what we can learn from this part, and it can do the piecing together later if it wants. Yeah. Did it give you space and are you still feeling connected or in the presence of this sad part? Um, I... I a little bit, um... without my grown-up manager, like, showing me the path to it mm -hmm. or, like, holding on to the path to it, which I kind of mm -hmm. needed to let go of because it was sort of in the way. But now I'm sort of trying to, like, find it again. Mm-hmm. And that grown-up manager might be right about those connections, and they might be really important. So we just want to see what we can learn directly from the part. Uh -huh. And if they're if they're important to that part right now, then that's fine. And if they're not, then we'll we'll go with what this part wants you to know about it, how it's doing. Okay, I'm just gonna like trailhead myself back to it a little bit where Okay. Um I where I get triggered so much by Whatever way I try, I still feel like nobody understands or sees mm -hmm. or appreciates. Mm -hmm. And there's a feeling of deep sadness, loneliness. Yeah, here it is. Okay. It's like the part is... It's like lying on the ground, it's sad, but it's also like just feels very deeply. And actually in that sadness, it like has, there's almost this openness that it's showing me, like that it doesn't have protectors. It's just feeling the sadness. Yeah. How do you feel towards it? I feel like warm, that it's like open. Beautiful. Yeah. Show it that and let it know it can show you whatever it wants to show you in any way that it wants.
Just let it know you really want to understand it. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just, my experience right now is like somatic. Um, mm -hmm. Feeling it in like my heart and my mouth is like very drooly. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You feel like you're coming to know this part better? Yeah. Great. I think it's. I think there's some like intergenerational stuff here. I get this like fetal image and I get this sort of like, I don't know, it's just a sense that it's getting this grief from its mother. Okay, maybe you can ask it. Ask if it's getting grief from its mother or if it knows where that grief comes from. Still feeling warm and open? Yeah. Is the part like having you there? Yeah, the part feels like very, very just born or <laughs> Or younger, like it's a very spacious sort of mm -hmm. 
experience it showing me. Like primordial. Mm -hmm. uh, Just feel it in my heart. Mm hmm Sadness now. Yeah. Are you okay with that? With how it's showing you that? Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Just let it know you can make space for that. That it's sadness is okay with you. You see how it's been misunderstood or not understood and that you want to be the one who understands it. Okay, now it's showing me more sadness. You okay with it? Yeah. Okay. Like, it's a little, it was kind of out of the, a little out of its body, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, my, me feeling it in my heart. I'm getting a little confused about like me feeling my my heart. Am I feeling the part or am I feeling my heart? But it's like the part is showing me like that it wasn't in my heart. The part didn't feel like it had a place in your heart? Well, that it, well, I mean, it, it, it was me. So it like, it wasn't in, in its heart. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense to me. It sounds like a part that's been exiled. It's out of the warm, open place of self. Uh-huh. And maybe there wasn't enough, enough self available when when it was having those experiences in the past. Well, yeah, it was, it, it was very little. Right, right. And so we have protectors come and do what they do to try to deal with it. But what the part needs is that place yeah. in the heart to go to. Right. And so those protectors that were like making these places like very alone, 
alienating themselves. Mm -hmm. It's because the exile wasn't in side. Mm. The exile was pushed out, so the protectors were pushing out even further. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I I don't want to like get my brain too involved, but I was like described as an extremely colicky baby. Okay. Uh, and so this like somatic sensation of just being in my heart for this like really small baby who couldn't yes find that because i don't know why it wasn't available wasn't available in the baby which is normal and you know maybe it didn't have didn't feel that it had the place in others at times And its sadness was something that protectors and the rest of your system wanted to just push away. Yeah. And it makes sense that, like, because this part is so young that it was, like, sort of codependent. Of course. Uh, or utterly I dependent. Mean, <laughs> I mean... Yeah. On others. Right, right. Yeah. And, and that it sort of confused, the older version sort of confused its own sadness with its mother's sadness, you know? Mm hmm Yeah. Like the, one so, on, the one lying on the floor. Yeah. So we just want to let this part know that, well, who you are now, and that you have a warm heart with all the space for this part. Does the part feel like you understand it and understand its experience and its burdens? Or is there more it wants to show you? Mm. 
I mean, I'm, I'm just getting it like resting a little bit, you know? Okay. Yeah. If you want, you could offer it a different place to rest or anything, you know, what would help it rest? If it's in an uncomfortable space, does it want to join you in a different space? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so when I was like six months old, I was put in these like metal braces in my feet. Mm. It was ridiculous. But anyway, this mm. this 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 part does not want to be lying down anymore. It wants to be yeah. sitting. It wants to be yeah. sitting cross like it. It wants to be sitting up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. And that sort of, it's showing me like that hypervigilant state. It that wants to move its legs and can't. Mm, yeah. That's the one I talked about where like when somebody misunderstands me, I just go into this like emergency sort of screaming inside. Uh-huh. I believe you've also talked about feeling like your f feet were taken out from under you or your ankles are broken. And Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's that's the kind of thing you can provide for this part. It's just helping it, you know, recognizing, acknowledging those burdens and helping it get to a place where it feels like it can be itself. Mm -hmm. If that means sitting up versus lying down, mm -hmm. then, then that's what you can provide. I mean, yeah, just like that feeling for it, that it can sit, <laughs> it can, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to stay down. Yeah. Right, with you there. It's, it just makes sense how like physiological these parts are, like how mm -hmm. in my body they are so mm -hmm. because yeah. of that like physical situation. Yeah. A lot of times at this stage, I'm suggesting that people, you know, ask the part if it wants to take you back to a time and, and be there for it in the way that it needs someone. And it kind of sounds like that's an example of that. It needed someone to acknowledge that discomfort that it had. And yeah, and it, yeah. And it, it like wants me to just sort of like 
feel all these things in my body that it was sort of like not feeling. It was like jumping out of. Right. Right. Being grounded. Jumping out of. Jumping out of, running away from. Yeah. Bu building worlds to distract or to get away from. Yeah. You can make space for all of that. Yeah, I just, uh, I want to do it in a way that like works for this and not like that my grown up manager sort of takes over and is like, oh yeah, you should do that. Yeah. And how's that been going? I mean, does the grown up manager keep popping in or? No, I mean, I've sort of wanted, no, I, I can feel it, right? Like mm -hmm. that it wants to pop in now. It wants mm -hmm. to be, it's like, cause it knows there's like the end of this call and mm -hmm. what's yep. going to happen after this. Like, how are we going to? I think that's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. What's going to happen after this? So I would, again, we could thank the grown up manager, um, and I would, again, kind of redirect that question to the part that you're with, to the six-month-old or whoever this part is. How do you want me to continue being with you in the future? Where would you like to meet? Do you want to come with me and make a different space? How will I know it's you? What do you need from me in the future? Uh, I, it's, it's so, it, uh, it wants like physical closeness. Yes. Like it, it's showing me like more inside my body, like in my tummy and connecting that with the wet mouth and it wants me to feel it and be like physically close with it. <laughs> I mean, I've in the past I've had like my youngest part experience was when I was five days old, it was showing me like how mad it was that it got switched mm. to the bottle. <laughs> mm. And it's like this, this part of this part that we're working with now showed me like, you know, that physical closeness of breastfeeding, like, mm -hmm. but it was also showing me like a sensation inside my body, like in my tummy and my mouth. And mm. like, it just, I, I think it's that just bringing myself back inside my body. Yeah. And that, I mean, this is all, it gets so freaking confusing and like fractal because it's like a part, but it's like me and then it's in my body. And yeah. 
this part was yeah. sort of out of my body and but anyway yeah i know what you mean it, it's, it's kind of abstract and that's one of the reasons why you know the the grown-up manager types uh they sometimes they you know they can't follow all this it's kind of like this is really hard to put uh, <laughs> you know, in, in the textbook. Um, yeah. but you're, you're feeling it. Yeah. This part is telling you what it needs. It's, and it's telling you how to meet that need for it. Yeah. I mean, it's basically like, feel me in deep inside your body or something like, yeah. Connect your body with me and my sort of, Find the comfort in there. Yeah. Or find the connection in there at least, if not the comfort. I mean, it's showing me like breastfeeding as comfort. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, Whatever it wants to show you. Yeah, like, ha yeah. I mean, I, I, I think the physical comfort is just being connected inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my gut, my mouth, my heart, all of it. And does that answer the question of how do we do this in the future? Like, does that feel like something you can do as a way to reconnect with this part? Yeah, mm -hmm. like just the sort of deep inside. The being open to like the sort of physiological sensations of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm getting space from those parts that want to figure it out, getting space from those parts yeah. that are trying to solve it other ways. And, and those might be parts that you want to check in with, you know, and show them your connection with this exile part. And so when they're trying to deal with the, not, the deep sadness, the loneliness, the not being understood in their ways, you can remind them that you have a unique way of holding this part of being with it. Yeah. Yeah. And the more I can like feel it and sort of go deep inside to like be connected with it, the less that sort that like emergency screaming, right. like somebody like like it's like um it's like blame or wanting somebody else to fix it. Right. And this part was was not attached to your heart you know it it, it it was looking outside it was dependent and that's mm -hmm. and that's how a baby gets its needs met is yeah. scream until someone fixes it right, right. totally normal right. yeah totally normal <laughs> yeah but not practical right now <laughs> right right yeah all those parts make sense. They've all been there a long time. They've been doing what they do for a good reason. And this is just updating them and showing them your genuine, warm connection with this part.
And I'm sort of showing it that like, I'm open to sadness. Like sadness is right. beautiful. Right. I feel so much like, Yeah, all the parts are welcome. It's almost like a happy sadder. I yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like a it's like, you know, if someone gives you a massage and they like rub really hard and it's like, mm-hmm. oh that feels so good because you're getting that knot out. You know, I uh-huh. feel that way about like this infant kind of sadness. It's like this is a kind of sadness of just, just grow, li- just live it, like just being a baby. Uh-huh. Like, it's yeah. a, it's like, it's, it's a good, it's a like it's it's like a, a baby's mm-hmm. not sad to be sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or there's nothing wrong with it be, to be sad, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure why. It, or how it sort of got all these protections around it. But maybe that I can find out next time. Yeah, you can. I think the I think the main practice is can you find your way back here with this part? You know, can can you make those connections so that the protectors start trusting that they don't have to work as hard. Yeah. And it is fun to connect all the dots and figure it all out. And those parts are valuable too. Uh-huh. But I think this is the core of the work is finding these young parts that were out of the nest and bringing them back in and being with them in the way that they need. Wow. Wow. God, I'm so like, I'm, I feel very worried that I'm going to get a part come in that's going to like try blaming like people who cannot help me solve this problem at all. Yeah. Those parts exist. And it is, it is sad. It's, and there probably is lots of blame to go around for people who could have helped or who, you know, had some responsibility or, or just for the world, not understanding this part, this child, your needs, its needs. But that is so fruitless. Yeah. And it's really Mm. distracting from like the sort of rich, like relationship that I can build inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's a conversation that you can have with that distracting, blaming part, you know? Yeah. It's also welcome. It's there for a good reason. And when it comes up, you can acknowledge it. Give it what it needs. Well, I mean, it is, it like, it sort of is this part that mm-hmm. was totally, sure. entirely dependent on others. Mm-hmm. But to have this part, but have it only be entirely dependent on self is like the the prize or the yes the sort of fountain of yes of like self care and self responsibility uh huh yep. and yep yep self empowerment and all that yep and That's kind right. of moving away from this endless like karmic seeking energy. reaching yeah yep. it's very sweet congratulations <laughs> um yeah sorry you got started late thanks for being so patient yeah yeah good job uh keep doing it and yes other parts will keep coming up you probably have other exiles. They all just need your attention, your love. Uh-huh. They all uh-huh. they all need self self's presence. 
All right. Well, I will see. You. I will hear, be with you next time. And uh, okay, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. Bye. All right. Bye. Do you want to help bring more self energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Yvonne, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube, and they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there. And give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you. <laughs>